my initial inclination was not to attend this event. I did because of Ahmed Idris. And I'll tell you why. A few years ago, in Kano, we had a meeting of the National Planning Commission, similar to your Treasury workshop. And I was invited to address commissioners, permanent secretaries, directors of planning on the Nigerian economy. I declined. I received a written invitation from the Secretary of the State Government. I received a phone call from the Minister of Planning, and I agreed. And then I had the meeting and talked about the economy. I talked about things that were done well and things that were not being done well, I wanted to do. And for saying that we we're not doing some things well, I got into a lot of trouble. So I decided that we have a problem. If government invites you to a function, I does not want to hear the truth. The best thing is not to go. So this year, when I was invited to address the newly elected governors by the Nigerian Governors Forum, I refused to go. The DG called me and I said, I will not come. Because if you tell them, these are things that you have not done, these are things that you should do, it is interpreted as an attack and a criticism. But since I have decided to come, you have to accept what I say to you. His Excellency the President said in his inaugural speech that his government would like to lift people out of poverty. It was a speech that was well received, not just in this country, but all over the world. Because the concentration of extreme poverty in Africa is a source of great concern. And the numbers are frightening. Last year at the United Nations General Assembly, Bill Gates presented the goalkeeper's report. And we all know the numbers and the forecast, which is that if we do not change the way things are done across the world, by 2050, 85% of all those living in extreme poverty in the world will be on the African continent. 85%. And half of them will be in two countries, Nigeria and the Democratic Republic of Congo. So we're all happy that the president has announced that he's going to lead this fight against poverty. For 30 years, we have had this project called Petroleum Subsidy, which is not a subsidy. In economics, it's a hedge. We don't call it hedge because we know the implications. We, the first step we must do is stop this hedge and at least make it a subsidy. And let me try to explain. When you subsidize something, let's say it costs 100 naira, you're saying to somebody, this costs 100 naira, I am subsidizing to the tune of 20% or 30%. It does not matter what the interest rate, and when you look at the components of petroleum price, 
the foreign exchange rate, the price, interest rates, demorage, petroleum equalization. You know what happens? Nigeria is the only country whose balance sheet does not benefit from an increase in the price of oil. And this did not start with this government. It has been on for 20, 30 years. I'm not speaking theory. I was governor of the central bank. In 2011, the federal government earned $16 billion from the oil sector. The country spent $8 billion importing petroleum products and $8.2 billion subsidizing products. 100% of what we earned in the oil sector went out to import petrol. You are treasurers. Is this sustainable? The country will be bankrupted. And we are heading to bankruptcy. <laughs> so let us begin. And I know politicians, it's very difficult for you to say, I have removed petroleum subsidy. Let us begin by saying, let the government say, we are going to pay 30% <laughs> of the cost of petrol. Let's begin from there. And maybe next year, we'll bring it down to 20%. Maybe next year to 10%. By 2022, we are down to zero. But for the federal government to place itself in a position where, in finance, you all know this is what is called a naked hedge. The price of crude oil goes up and petroleum products, the federal government pays. Exchange rate moves, the federal government pays. Interest rates move, the federal government pays. Demorage, the federal government pays. What is so cru crucial, what is so life-threatening about petroleum price that we have to sacrifice education, sacrifice health, sacrifice infrastructure so that we can have cheap petrol and risk the financial health of the country. It's a difficult decision, but if the president really wants to deal with poverty, he has to deal with this. And you have to tell Nigerians that they have to be ready. If the international price of oil goes up, people must be ready to pay more. If it goes down, people will benefit. We have to be responsible. This is what happens everywhere in the world. 100% of what we earned in the oil sector went out to import petrol. You are treasurers. Is this sustainable? the country will be bankrupted. And we are heading to bankruptcy. <laughs> so let us begin. And I know politicians, it's very difficult for you to say, I have removed petroleum subsidy. Let us begin by saying, let the government say, we are going to pay 30% <laughs> of the cost of petrol. Let's begin from there. And maybe next year, will bring it down to 20%. Maybe next year to 10%. By 2022, we are down to zero. But for the federal government to place itself in a position where, in finance, you all know this is what is called a naked hedge. The price of crude oil goes up and petroleum products the federal government pays. Exchange rate moves, the federal government pays. Interest rates move, the federal government pays. Demorage, the federal government pays. 
what is so cru crucial what is so life threatening about petroleum price that we have to sacrifice education sacrifice health sacrifice infrastructure so that we can have cheap petrol and risk the financial health of the country. It's a difficult decision, but if the president really wants to deal with poverty, he has to deal with this. And you have to tell Nigerians that they have to be ready. If the international price of oil goes up, people must be ready to pay more. If it goes down, people will benefit. We have to be responsible. This is what happens everywhere in the world.